tweeting tonight for the first time, President Trump is tweeting about an alleged affair with porn star Stormy Daniels. A day after Daniels and her attorney released a sketch of a man they say tried to silence uh, Daniels with a threat, the president issued this response, quote, a sketch years later about a non-existent man, a total con job, playing the fake news media for fools, but they know it, close quote. We're joined now by Michael Avenatti. He's the attorney for Stormy Daniels. Michael, thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. What's your reaction to the president's tweet? Well, you know, Wolf, it's another gift from the heavens, uh, quite frankly. I mean, the president has no business tweeting about me or my client while he's a party in litigation, uh, especially when it comes to making misstatements about my client. He's effectively now told the American people that she's a liar, that she's a con, that she has made up this uh, threat and this sketch, and I'm outraged by it, and there's gonna be some serious, serious consequences uh, for it. Like what? What kind of consequences? Well, we're likely gonna be amending our complaint. We're looking at doing that now to add a defamation claim uh, directly against the president. There's gonna be consequences that are gonna flow from that if we decide to do it. It's gonna make the fact of his deposition that much more likely. You know, this is what happens, Wolf, when you have an undisciplined client like the president who just wakes up, up, wake, wakes up one morning and decides that he's going to tweet nonsense about my client. So this defamation claim, this lawsuit you're going to file, that's a new development? That's, that is absolutely a new development, and we're likely to file it in the same case that we are already in, and we're going to add a claim. And file it in California? Correct. And the argument is that he's defaming your client by this by this one tweet. There's no question that he defamed my client. He's client. He's calling my client a liar and basically stating that she made this up and it's a con. And well, if the only con that has taken place here is the con that the president Michael Cohen is trying to pull on the American people by trying to tell the American people that he didn't know about the agreement, he knew nothing about the payment and the cover up. The cover up is really the con. A total con job. Uh, that's what the president tweeted, playing the fake news media for fools, but they know it. So when, when he says a total con job, you're accusing the president of calling her a con. No, I'm not accusing the president of doing that. I'm stating that's exactly what he did. I mean, it's clear as day what he meant by that. But you know the president, a lot of us have been surprised he's been so silent until now on the Stormy Daniels case. Uh, finally, he is reacting right now. This is the first time in weeks You've been on the air plenty of times over these past uh, several weeks. She's been on the air a couple of times as well, including yesterday. All of a sudden, he has now decided to speak out via Twitter. Why do you think he did that? Well, I think he's in a panic mode because I think that he feels that the noose is tightening around his uh, close friend and attorney, Michael Cohen, and he's very concerned about where that's going to lead, and he should be concerned because of those FBI raids and uh, Michael Cohen and the situation that Michael Cohen uh, finds himself in. Give us an update on the uh, man in that sketch. Uh, allegedly, this individual a few years ago threatened Stormy Daniels in a parking lot or her child was in the car with her. Where does it stand right now? You've released the sketch yesterday. We released the sketch yesterday. We've received over 1,500 leads uh, as of a few hours ago. I would describe a couple hundred of those as credible. We have an idea uh, as to who it might be. We have a handful of individuals. We're also running to ground the leads that we're receiving to see if we can tighten that ID up. It's going to take some time. We're going to be very diligent and careful before we go out and announce uh, who it might be. Are you working with law enforcement on this, uh, the, the identification of this individual? I'm not at liberty to state Why that. Why can't you tell us that? Well, because I'm not at liberty to state it, and I'm gonna, we're going to respect the process, and we're going to be, if, if, if somebody tells us to be careful or confidential about something, we're going to do it. If they, they locate this individual and identify, is there a statute of limitations on a threat like this? That, there is a statute of limitations, but we think that the statute um, has not, uh, or, or is not applicable as it relates to criminal conspiracy and a couple other uh, crimes that could be alleged. So in, in the dozens of names of individuals who have come to you thinking they, I can, they can identify this man based on this sketch. Hundreds. Hundreds of them. Uh, are they all different names or are they all focusing in on one or two or five uh, individuals? Well, there's, there's many different names, but there is some overlap. And, and by the way, I want to make clear, I announced on Don Lemon last night that the Reward is not 100000 it's $131,000 now, as opposed to 100000 and we, we think that's a pretty good number. Because uh, she was paid $130,000 as part of the non-disclosure agreement she worked out uh, with, uh, uh, with, with uh, Michael Cohen. That's correct, and, and we want to get to the bottom of this, and we want the truth known. Well, Let me get your reaction. There's been a new development. Uh, we're, we've now been told 
uh, that uh, this, according to the New York Times, the Karen McDougal, the former playmate, has reached an agreement uh, with uh, American Media, the parent company of the National Enquirer. Uh, they've released her from any agreement that they worked out with her. She got $150,000 as part of that agreement. She can now talk freely. Uh, should President Trump and Michael Cohen, for that matter, be worried about this? Because she's already spoken to our own Anderson Cooper, as you know. You know, I don't know, because I don't know enough details about that particular situation. But I, I think the more and more information and documents that come to light, Wolf, uh, Michael Cohen and the president should be absolutely worried, especially when we get into the documents seized by the FBI. The uh, CNN, uh, we reported that the president is described as apoplectic over the entire Michael Cohen investigation that's now unfolded the Southern District of New York by the U.S. Attorney's Office there. He's fixated, supposedly, on this above everything else, including national security issues. What does that tell you? Well, if he's upset now, he ought to wait a week or two. Why? Because it's only going to get worse, Wolf. This isn't going to get better for an extended period of time. More information is going to come out. We're going to continue to be aggressive. We're going to press forward as it relates to Michael Cohen's deposition and the president's deposition. Wolf, the chickens are coming home to roost. Have you seen actual evidence, documents, that suggest to you that within the next week or two, the president's uh, fixation on this is even going to get worse? I'm not going to answer that, but I'm going to stand behind my statements, and I think my track record of prediction over the last five weeks is pretty good. The government uh, says it will start producing uh, uh, documents to Michael Cohen and his attorneys by the end of next week. Uh, President uh, Trump's attorneys will see some of these documents as well as part of this inv criminal investigation that's underway in New York. How do you think the president will react uh, when his attorneys brief him on the documents that uh, the FBI has collected in those raids on Michael Cohen's house, his office, his hotel room, his safe deposit box? Well, well, if they already have access to the vast majority of these documents, because other than, other than 10 boxes of hard copy documents that were removed, the electronic media were imaged on site at the office and the home, and then the media was left behind. So the phones, the laptops, et cetera, that's the representation of the assistant U.S. attorney and what he stated. So they have access to a lot of these documents right now, and they should be pouring through them and providing an update to the president. Do you have access to those documents? I, I don't have access to them yet, but we'll get it. Why do you say that? Well, because I'm highly confident that in the discovery process, in our case, we're going to be able to subpoena those records or otherwise get them from the government. Michael Lavinati, thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you, sir.